The Coast Guard cutter had set me adrift on a rubber raft a few miles from shore. When I got in close enough, I'd sunk the raft with its equipment and supplies. That way, if I ran into any questions on this supposedly deserted island, I might be able to get by with a shipwreck story. My name's Mike Nelson, professional diver. This trip, I was working for the government. If somebody was setting up a base here, they wanted to know it. The island seemed deserted, all right. Not a living thing in sight, except me. A radar installation, just as aerial observation had reported. It hadn't been used for a long time. What are you doing here? Might I ask the same question of you, sir? Yes, you might, but it wouldn't do you any good. Now, who are you? <laughs> There's no substitute for victory, is there? <laughs> My name's Gerard. John Gerard. E-P-A-L. E-P-A-L. What does that stand for? <laughs> Escaped prisoner at large. <laughs> yeah? Well, where'd you escape from? from a little island called Isla de la Tres Marias. How'd you get here from there? By raft. You might say the trip became a bit of a bore. You might say that you're a bit of a liar, too. Now, just a minute, old man. You may have the right to kill me, perhaps, but not insult me. Now, that penal colony is quite a distance from here. Do you expect me to believe that you made it here in a raft? Without instruments? Without food? Believe what you like. What's the difference now? Well, you've got to admit that it's quite a trip. How long did it take you? Ten days, thereabouts. Water ran out early. I've been here for three days. I suppose you're innocent of what they put you in there for, huh? huh? Innocent? <laughs> no. Very guilty. Uh, listen, old boy. You don't happen to have brought some food with you, do you? Yeah, I got some emergency rations down on my raft. I'll get you some. As soon as I take a quick look around, yeah. What's your idea? I forgot to tell you about the uh, camp on the other side of the island. Bunch of strange types. 
pollywogs, I call them. They're in the water off the point most of the time. In gear like yours. Yeah. I really don't know, Ducky. I, uh, I didn't get close enough to find out. Why didn't you? Well, it's simple, really. I, uh, I'd rather be hungry than dead. Oh. It's like that, huh? Mm -hmm. Johnny, lead me to your polywax. We made it to the other side of the island without being spotted. There they were, Johnny's pollywogs. Just four of them. Four that I could see, that is. You hear him? You know that language? I recognize it, but I don't understand it. I've heard it before, in Europe. Let's get out of here, huh? We wound up back at the lagoon. That seemed to be the safest jump-off point for an underwater survey of whatever it was that the polywogs had set up off the point. I don't know what I expected. Some sort of construction or installation, I guess. A submarine pen or a missile launcher, something like that. What I found was a cave. It was a special kind of a cave, apparently. From what I could see, part of it had to be above water. An underground warehouse with only one way in and out, underwater. Now this polywog business made sense. They had assembled more ammunition than I'd ever seen in one place before. Some of the crates were labeled in half a dozen different languages. Most of them weren't. But government experts would be able to tell where they came from, provided I could get the information to them. Enough of them here to blow up a city. Johnny had warned me that the polywogs were in and out of the water all the time. It wasn't safe for me to hang around much longer. I didn't have enough air to risk out swimming him, so I made sure that he wouldn't be able to follow me. I headed back to the lagoon. I had plenty to think about on the way. An island occupied by unfriendly, well-armed strangers and a British thief is my only ally. 
How far could I trust Johnny? You found it, Michael? Yeah. It's a warehouse. It's full of dynamite, full of ammunition. An underwater warehouse. I put nothing past these blokes. Oh, I'd like to get out of them. Just one of them before I'm patching. It might be sooner than you think. They know we're here. Oh. I tangled with one of them. We gotta get out of here fast. Take it easy now, careful. They're playing it carefully, Ducky. They don't know whether we're armed. Don't happen to have a rusty old gun or something like that, do you? I got a spear gun. Huh? My raft. Yeah, I saw you sink it. Rafts, spear gun, rations and all. All right, Ducky. Get yourself a handful of rocks and let's have at them. The pollywogs had us pinned down on the shore of a lagoon. Our only way out was underwater. That's why we loaded Johnny down with rocks. Get up there. The rocks in his pockets took the place of a weight belt. Johnny took to buddy breathing like a pro. Question was, did we have enough air to make it to the raft? Now we were on my emergency reserve. Would it take us all the way? Fortunately, my equipment included two sets of reserve tanks. That'd get us back to the underground warehouse, all right. We had to get there. It was the only place where we had even a chance of staying alive till morning. South America. We need big trouble. Blow it up, you mean? Yeah. But at the entrance, I can seal it off. Also, bring the Coast Guard in. Had you to pick me up in the morning. Yeah. Look it out here. All through there. Don't suppose there's anything to eat in all that mess? Maybe the pollywogs were saving up some kind of a surprise for us. Anyway, we spent the night in their arsenal without any visitors. Mike, this plan of yours to blow this place up, it's terribly important to me. 
These chaps, you see, these pollywogs. I've been at them before, you know. Yeah, I kind of figured you were. I don't mean to get more than my but There was a girl I loved very much. I thought she was all I needed or wanted. And she was killed. I was in special services. They'd they dropped us into the country to start communications for some revolution or other the home folks were brewing. You remember? That was where I met Maria. She was a splendid girl. Real top drawer, at least to me. Suddenly I wasn't content just blowing up this or breaking into that. Suddenly I, I'd found something that put a, a whole new coat of paint on the world, you know. I'm sorry, Johnny. How did it happen? A tank. It was the first day, too. And that was the day that did it. That was the day that did it for John Gerard Michael. There was nothing to go on for after that. There's always something to go on for, Johnny. You just have to find out what it is. No, you don't understand. Yes, I do. Life's rough at times. But that's no time to give up. I didn't give up. What else is stealing but giving up? down here. If they come down when we're rigging the blast, we've had it. Oh, we can't do anything about that. I guess the best way to blow it now is with this dynamite. Using a grenade as a detonator. Diversion reaction upstairs. That would do it. What do you mean? It would give you enough time to do the real job. I could hold them off if they come sniffing round for you. That's good idea, but how you can do that? With some dynamite. You don't need it all, Ducky. And your spear gun. You know, like those flaming arrows the Red Indians are always hurling into your stockade back home. Uh, you're pretty ingenious, aren't you? Okay, let's get to work. I had done the major part of the downstairs job. Now I had to rig my grenade detonator. Topside, Johnny was ready and waiting with his arrows. He knew he had to keep that diver from going into the water and spotting me.
I was on the last lap of completing the underwater bomb that would seal off the arsenal. What I had to do now was rig a trip device so I could set it off from above water. That called for putting a heavy stone on the line so the thing wouldn't go off before I wanted it to. A hard tug would pull the line out from under the stone, and that would pull the pin on the grenade. the polywogs had managed to escape out of range of Johnny's spear gun. That meant that pretty soon they'd be coming into range of me. My line wasn't long enough. I tied the end to an inflatable buoy so I could locate it from topside when I got more line. But where I'd get that extra bit of line, I didn't know. ready to blow it. I've let him get to the raft. One of them is about to dive. I'm not ready. What? The line is too short. I need another line to splice onto it. Well, where is it, the line? I tied it onto that marker boy. Let's see if I can steal a line from them. No time, Michael, old lad. You just won't have the time. Johnny! Johnny! works, Mike. Hey, just picked your friends up. Well, good job all the way round, mate. You'll get a good pat on the back. Yeah, what about you? That's a U.S. cutter out there. What do I do, Johnny? I climb aboard her, Mike. I got it on a raft. I can leave on one. Gonna give up for good this time, huh? It looks that way to you, does it? I wouldn't like that, you know. Neither would she. She was a fighter, you said. Maria? Took a tank to stop her. I owe him three years, you know, in the Isla de la Tres Marias. Probably more now for taking French leave. Oh, it's less now, Johnny, after what you did here. The people who locked you up take a very dim view of secret warehouses full of ammunition. Um, you put a good word in for me, would you, Ducky? I'll talk the warden's ears off. Oh, no, no, I meant uh, with the captain out there, oh boy, of, uh, on your cutter. Don't worry. He won't throw you in the brig. I'll see to that. Oh, blimey, not that. All I want is a little something to eat. Let's go get it done. Hi. I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today.